Hey guys, welcome back. In this lecture, I will be talking about retrieving data from lists and updating lists with additional data items. Essentially, some of the basic operations that lists support. Uh, in the previous lecture, we discussed the topic of creating lists. So I do have a uh, logic that uh, is left there from the previous lecture. I would recommend if you follow along to uh, go back there to what we have left off from the list creation lesson and reconstruct this logic where we create a list with some uh, uh, rainbow colors. Okay, uh, let's talk about retrieving data from lists. And to remind you, lists have items, every single item has an index, and in code lists, the, that those indexes, they start with one. Let's take a look at the blocks that we have in the lists category, specifically the very first one. Uh, let's drag it out and let's take a look. And in here, it says in list, there is a variable, by the way, whenever you use this, this variable list will be created for you automatically. We do not need that. We can actually switch to the rainbow variable because that's the variable that contains our list. So this block reads like this in list rainbow get and then there is number and there is placeholder. Uh, this is the default uh, configuration of this block. And if you look in here, it says, uh, in addition to get, it can do get and remove, and then there is remove. Those operations we will review separately. And in this one, in this dropdown, it has this number, which basically means that if you leave it like this, and it will expect the actual index uh, to get the value uh, for, and then you have uh, this index from the end, first, last, and random. We will try all of them today. I will be using print block to uh, see what this block will return and all the variations of it. But uh, as you know, uh, this uh, block returns a value and you can put it either in a variable, use it somewhere else. In my examples, I'm using the print block to display. So we're working with a, a list that that is sitting in the rainbow variable. And uh, let's say that we want to get uh, an element that is in the index three. So what we will be getting is uh, here's our list. One will be red, two is orange, and three is yellow. So let's see uh, whether it is like this, whether it works as we would expect. Let's drag a number in here and then put three in here. So if I run this page, we do get yellow. So that's exactly what's expected. So as you know now that this block is capable of getting a, uh, a value from, from the list. What if we put an index that does not exist? And in this case, how about we put 10? It's large enough. We know there are only six items, but we put 10. Let's run it and see what happens. See, we get undefined. There is really no error. We just get undefined. Whenever it happens to you and you're getting undefined, you're out of range. For example, how can we get undefined if, if the actual index is correct? Let's take a look at this again. So we put number three where yellow was and we take yellow out completely. The value is not there. In fact, let's print out our rainbow just to see what it actually looks like when you have something like this. Let's rerun it. And notice that right now, when you don't have a value in there, what Codeless does is it actually puts the value of null in the missing spot. So it's not going to be undefined. It is actually going to be null. So now you know that if you are using, if you are getting back from this undefined, that means that the index is actually wrong. The same thing will happen if you put something like minus one. See, you're getting undefined again. Let's reconstruct our list and put yellow back in there. And to reiterate what we learned, using this block, you can get a value at a specific index. If you're using an index that is outside of the range of what that list uh, supports, of the values that it contains, you're getting back undefined. And an additional thing, if you don't have a value in this block for a specific index, then Codeless will put null in there and that value is going to be null. All right, now what will happen if we use get and remove? So once again, let's go into three. This will do get and remove. A couple of things will happen. 
this block will actually get the value in, in the index three. But the actual list, the actual list that is stored in the rainbow will be modified. In fact, let me uh, copy this print of the rainbow. Notice that we, what's, what's going to happen here, we will print out our list first, then we'll print out the value that was in the index number three. And that value at the index number three will be removed and we're printing out rainbow again. So in reality, the modification of that list in the rainbow variable will happen inside of this block. Let's run it and then see what we're actually going to be getting. All right, so this line comes from here, from this print. Then we got yellow, which was at the index number three. And then rainbow is reprinted again, but now it contains five elements because whatever was at the index number three is now removed. Guess what? When that value is removed, all values that followed yellow, and those are green, blue, and purple, they shift up, meaning that now at the after this was removed, the value at the index number three will still exist and it will be green and value at the index number four will be purple. So essentially, if you think about elements in the list having individual positions, once one is removed, there is no empty spot. Everything else shifts up to fill up that spot. So that's what the removal uh, will do. Uh, the other option is to remove. In this case, you simply remove a value at a specific index. Nothing is returned, so you're just modifying that particular list. Okay. All right, let's also take a look at other option. So we have get and then we have number. Now there is also number from and. Okay. So this one will, will count index number three from the beginning. And this way we have red is one, orange is two, yellow is three. Now what if we do number from and, and it's going to be two? I would imagine it will start counting from here. Purple is going to be one, blue is going to be number two. But let's check whether it is like that. So let's rerun this page. And see, we got blue. Indeed, if we identify two as the number, as the index from the end, purple will be one, blue will be two. So you can actually index those values in a list from the end using this specific block. Let's see what else we have. We have first, last, and random. These are self-explanatory. If we were to run it as first, obviously we will get red. If we run last, we will get purple. See, we got red because it was first. And random, there is no prediction. It's going to be completely random any one of these will be returned. And if we run it, in this case, roll the dice, it becomes blue. And next time, if we run it, it's going to be something different. Purple. Okay. So that's, <clears throat> that's this block, rather versatile, can retrieve, can retrieve and delete, can delete, and then you can identify which element you want to get. Okay, let's continue exploration. And uh, right now we're talking about retrieval. So we will skip this one because this actually assigns a value. Uh, let's take a look at this guy right here. So it, in here, let's switch to rainbow and connect it to a print blog as we usually do. And let's take a look. So in here it says in list rainbow, find first occurrence of item. And then there is a placeholder here. And then for first, there is first or last. Uh, <clears throat> I believe it is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, this block just does search within your list. So in here, let's say if we want to find first occurrence, meaning that there may be multiple occurrences. So if we were looking for, let's say, yellow, let's see what this uh, block returns. And it returns three. So what it does is it returns an index of the first occurrence of that element, yellow. Okay. And three is indeed the index of yellow in our rainbow list. If we were to extend our list and then create another yellow, for instance, uh, let's replicate it right here. And it's going to be kind of a strange rainbow because yellow will be twice. But let's say that's that's what it is. And uh, the first will still return three. 
But if we were to do last, it will actually find the very last occurrence, which will be at index number six, which is this position right here. So even if you have multiple, then first and last, obviously, the, the position of that value will be calculated. If your list contains numbers or booleans or, uh, or anything else, then it will work exactly the same way. So it will actually look within your list for that specific value. All right, let's move on and see what else we have. Okay, uh, we looked into this, finding first occurrence. In list, get sublist. So sublists are actually an interesting thing. A sublist is essentially a list which contains only specific, uh, uh, specific values. In fact, let me fix that to the way we had it before, just so we don't have double yellow. Okay, and let's take a look at how this block works. So in list rainbow, we'll be getting a sublist from specific index to specific index. For instance, if we were to get a sublist from index two to index four, you can guess what we're going to be getting. So index two is going to be orange, index four is green. So this will actually create a separate list that will be returned back that will contain orange, yellow and green simply because it starts from orange and ends at green. Let's run this thing and see we got orange, yellow and green. So this returns a sublist. Other options, again, number from the end first and then here number from the end last. If you were to do first and if you select last, then these numbers are needed, then the sublist is actually going to be identical replica of the original list because you're starting from the first and ending from, from the last, which is also another way to say, make me a copy of that list. So this is how you would go about that. Okay, let's see what else we have. We looked into this in the previous. All right, checking if, an, if the list contains an item, okay? In this case, with this block, as you probably have guessed, it returns a Boolean value because it just reads this way that uh, it checks whether a list contains a specific item. In fact, let's use our rainbow and check if it has, let's say, pink color. And let's run it. And as you can see, the very last printout from this one is false because indeed our rainbow list does not contain pink. But if we were to search for blue and run it again, then it is true. So this block can be used to determine if list contains a specific value. Again, it applies to strings, to numbers, to booleans. So we discussed retrieval, we, we discussed uh, finding items in a list. Let's talk about modifying list by adding item to it or, or replacing some of the values. There are just a couple of blocks that can take care of this for you. And uh, let's start with the first one. We go back to list and at the very top, actually the second one where you see in list and then set, that's the block that I would like to review. Let's add a print block because, uh, oh, actually we don't need the print block yet because this one is really just an operation. Uh, by the way, whenever you have a connector like this, it means that there is a return value. When there are no connectors, it is just an operation. So in here, we connected this in list, make sure to select the right list, rainbow, and let's review what we have. So in list rainbow, uh, the, by the default option is set and you can specify the index and you can specify the value. Okay. And uh, uh, in here, what's going to happen is you specify the index and uh, uh, what's going to happen with the set option is it will take that index and whatever value was there before, the new value will simply replace the old value. For example, let's say that we uh, will work with index number two and that index currently contains orange. And let's say that instead of orange, we want to pick 
uh, we want to put in there uh, same pink okay so the result of this will be is the orange value will be gone and the pink value will replace or orange so the set uh, can be seen really as replace and uh, the replacement will not change the structure of your list simply a different value will be in there so let's print out our rainbow after this modification and see what it looks like so now if you will notice that this is the updated list and the orange is gone and now there is pink in there uh, at the index number two here they're all skewed by one so in the console if you see one just always add one you will actually see that it is two so this set does uh, does this replacement just like with other options here you have index index from the end first and last and the set will always replace that value with whatever you uh, provide it okay we also have insert at so insert at will not replace it will actually inject a new value in that list so let's just keep it number two keep it as pink and then do the insert at and see what that list now looks like this is our list now it has seven values because one was inserted so now at number two at the position number two we have pink and then the orange which was previously at number two moved down to the next position which is really how insertion works and uh, there you have it so you can either replace an existing value that will be set or you can insert a value what happens if you insert a value at the, as the very last element okay that's really an insertion but uh, let's see uh, how that works just to avoid any kind of confusion notice that the very last one is now pink so pink was really inserted to be the last one you didn't need to worry about uh, the, the 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 structure knowing the indexes so insert at last is the same thing as just adding an item to your list it's it's going to be exactly the same thing and with that let's see how we can actually add items to the list with a separate block and that block will be right here in list let's select our rainbow you can add an item and let's uh, add a color and let's say that that color is going to be turquoise and after that if we were to print out our rainbow you will see that it now has eight elements so this was insert at last pink which was basically adding a pink and now we use a def different block to add turquoise at the very end and now this turquoise shows up at the very end quite conveniently this block also has this option return result we've never uh, uh dealt with that before and return result would actually be exactly the same block but it now returns this result notice the effect like this connector if i uncheck it disappears so you'll see that there is either procedural block that you can add to your procedures or one that has a connector if it has a connector then we can print the result and it's going to be exactly the same list modified but this let's 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 see if in addition to returning a list whether the actual rainbow was modified okay so this print will print out the result of adding an element to it and this will tell us whether the actual rainbow variable was modified let's take a look so as you can see this is the last one this is the actual rainbow so this block not only it well it added the value to rainbow returned the result but the actual rainbow was actually modified so the return result was the same value that is sitting inside of the variable it's not a copy it's exactly exactly the same thing which is something important whenever you are going to be writing your logic is knowing whether a replica was created where exactly the same list was modified so this rainbow is a variable remember when I was introducing variables 
I was talking about them as a box that has a name. So that box is now being passed into various blocks and those blocks can actually do something with it. And in here, in this block to add a value, it got that box and it basically dropped a new value in there. And then whatever that box had, it's exactly the same box that is now being returned. Whenever we were running a block that basically did a, uh, a sublist, then a new value, a new list was created and that, was, that was, was returned from that block. So very important distinction to kind of know whether a replica is created or not. We will be getting to that point when we start talking more about objects. We'll be coming back to it. But the takeaway is that there are ways to modify your list either by replacing a value, which is this set, inserting a value at a specific index at the end, at the beginning, or simply just adding a value, which is really insertion at the end. So those are the options to uh, modify your list. And with that, this is it as far as, you know, retrieving values from the list, updating lists. That's all that I prepared for you uh, in this lecture. In the next one, we will talk about sorting, filtering, just iterating over list, all those options which are going to be extremely important whenever you work with a list. Thank you guys for watching this video. And as always, happy codeless coding.